And a fellow drinking peace? If I was you, and I ain't, but if I was, I'd sell all that stuff you got and get out of here. That boy out there, he's always got something good, but you gotta give him some gold, or he won't even show you what he's got. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Ogden has owned and run the Rising Sun Inn and Tavern for almost four years now. He purchased it just a few short months before everything here went to hell. He and his wife, Garda, do not have the money to leave as they invested all they had in making a life for themselves here. He is a good man with a deep sense of responsibility. Well, what can I do for you? Your weapons and armor will show the signs of your struggles against the darkness. If you bring them to me, with a bit of work and a hot forge, I can restore them to top fighting form. Thank goodness you returned. Much has changed since you lived here, my friend. All was peaceful until the Dark Riders came and destroyed our village. Many were cut down where they stood, and those who took up arms were slain or, or dragged away to become slaves, or worse. The church at the edge of town has been desecrated and is being used for dark rituals. The screams that echo in the night are inhuman, but some of our townsfolk may yet survive. Follow the path that lies between my tavern and the blacksmith's shop to find the church and save who you can. Perhaps I can tell you more if we speak again. Good luck. What ails you, my friend? Before it was taken over by, well, whatever looks below, the cathedral was a place of great learning. There are many books to be found there. If you find any, you should read them all, for some may hold secrets to the workings of the labyrinth. How may I serve you? My 
grandmother had a dream that you would come and talk to me. She has visions, you know, and can see into the future. Over here. Kane knows too much. He scares the life out of me. Even more than that woman across the river. He keeps telling me about how lucky I am to be alive and how my story is foretold in legend. I think he's off his crock. Yep, that's a cow, all right. I sense a soul in search of answers. The hand, the heart, and the mind can perform miracles when they are in perfect harmony. The healer Pepin sees into the body in a way that even I cannot. His ability to restore the sick and injured is magnified by his understanding of the creation of elixirs and potions. He is as great an ally as you have in Tristram. Please, listen to me. The Archbishop Lazarus, he led us down here to find the Lost Prince. The bastard led us into a trap. Now everyone is dead, killed by a demon he called the Butcher. Avenge us! Find this Butcher and slay him, so that our souls may finally rest. Your death will be avenged. The sanctity of this place has been fouled.
your death will be avenged. Greetings, good master. Welcome to the Tavern of the Rising Sun. Adria is wise beyond her years, but I must admit, she frightens me a little. Well, no matter. If you ever have need to trade in items of sorcery, she maintains a strangely well-stocked hut just across the river. Yes, Farnham has mumbled something about a hulking brute who wielded a fierce weapon. I believe he called him a butcher. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Ah, oh, Jillian is a fine woman, much adored for her high spirits and her quick laugh. She holds a special place in my heart. She stays on at the tavern to support her elderly grandmother, who is too sick to travel. I sometimes fear for her safety, but I know that any man in the village would rather die than see her harmed. It seems that the Archbishop Lazarus goaded many of the townsmen into venturing into the labyrinth to find the king's missing son. He played upon their fears and whipped them into a frenzied mob. None of them were prepared for what lay within the cold earth. Lazarus abandoned them down there, left in the clutches of unspeakable horrors to die. Well, what can I do for you? The innkeeper has little business and no real way of turning a profit. He manages to make ends meet by providing food and lodging for those who occasionally drift through the village. But they're as likely to sneak off into the night as they are to pay him. If it weren't for the stores of grains and dried meats he kept in his cellar, why most of us would have starved during that first year when the entire countryside was overrun by demons. I saw what Farnham calls the Butcher as it swathed a path through the bodies of my friends. Ah, oh, he swung a cleaver as large as an axe, hewing limbs and cutting down brave men where they stood. I was separated from the fray by a host of small screeching demons, and somehow found the stairway leading out. I never saw that hideous beast again, but his blood-stained visage haunts me to this day. What ails you, my friend? Poor Wirt. I did all that was possible for the child, but I know he despises that wooden peg that I was forced to attach to his leg. His wounds were hideous. No one, and especially such a young child, should have to suffer the way he did. By the light I know of this vile demon, there were many that bore the scars of his wrath upon their bodies when the few survivors of the charge led by Lazarus crawled from the cathedral. I don't know what he used to slice open his victims, but it could not have been of this world. It left wounds festering with disease, and even I found them almost impossible to treat. Beware if you plan to battle this fiend. Day. How may I serve you? Ogden and his wife have taken me and my grandmother into their home, and have even let me earn a few gold pieces by working at the inn. I owe so much to them, and hope one day to leave this place and help them start a grand hotel in the east. 
when Farnham said something about a butcher killing people, I immediately discounted it. But since you brought it up, maybe it is true. Over here. If I were a few years older, I would shower her with whatever riches I could muster. And let me assure you, I could get my hands on some very nice stuff. Jillian is a beautiful girl who should get out of Tristram as soon as it is safe. Hmm, maybe I'll take her with me when I go. I know more than you think about that grizzly fiend. His little friends got a hold of me and managed to get my leg before Griswold pulled me out of that hole. I'll put it bluntly. Kill him before he kills you and adds your corpse to his collection. I sense a soul in search of answers. The sum of our knowledge is in the sum of its people. Should you find a book or scroll that you cannot decipher, do not hesitate to bring it to me. If I can make sense of it, I will share what I find. The Butcher is a sadistic creature that delights in the torture and pain of others. You have seen his handiwork in the drunkard Farnham. His destruction will do much to ensure the safety of this village.
Too much baggage. I can't carry any. I gotta pawn some of this stuff. My friend, stay a while and listen. I sense a soul in search of answers. What can I do for you? What ails you, my friend?
I have made a very interesting discovery. Unlike us, the creatures in the labyrinth can heal themselves without the aid of potions or magic. If you hurt one of the monsters, make sure it is dead, or it very well may regenerate itself. Whoa, what can I do for you? Your death will be avenged. Oh, my God. 
Too much baggage.
Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Griswold, a man of great action and great courage. I bet he never told you about the time he went into the labyrinth to save Wirt, did he? He knows his fair share of the dangers to be found there. But then again, so do you. He is a skilled craftsman, and if he claims to be able to help you in any way, you can count on his honesty and his skill. Oh, what can I do for you? A good man who puts the needs of others above his own. You won't find anyone left in Tristram, or anyone else for that matter, who has a bad thing to say about the healer. The village needs your help, good master. Some months ago, King Leoric's son, Prince Albrecht, was kidnapped. The king went into a rage and scoured the village for his missing child. With each passing day, Leoric seemed to slip deeper into madness. He sought to blame innocent townsfolk for the boy's disappearance and had them brutally executed. Less than half of us survived his insanity. The king's knights and priests tried to placate him, but he turned against them and, sadly, they were forced to kill him. With his dying breath, the king called down a terrible curse upon his former followers. He vowed that they would serve him in darkness forever. This is where things take an even darker twist than I thought possible. Our former king has risen from his eternal sleep and now commands a legion of undead minions within the labyrinth. His body was buried in a tomb three levels beneath the cathedral. Please, good master, put his soul at ease by destroying his now cursed form. Greetings, good master. Welcome to the Tavern of the Rising Sun. As I told you, good master, the king was entombed three levels below. He's down there, waiting in the putrid darkness for his chance to destroy this land. Farnham spends far too much time here drowning his sorrows in cheap ale. I would make him leave, but he did suffer so during his time in the labyrinth. Whoa, what can I do for you? I made many of the weapons and most of the armor that King Leoric used to outfit his knights. I even crafted a huge two-handed sword of the finest mithril for him, as well as a field crown to match. Oh, I still cannot believe how he died, but it must have been some sinister force that drove him insane. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Ah, the story of our king, is it? The tragic fall of Leoric was a harsh blow to this land. The people always loved the king, and now they live in mortal fear of him. The question that I keep asking myself is how he could have fallen so far from the light, as Leoric had always been the holiest of men. 
Only the vilest powers of hell could so utterly destroy a man from within. What ails you, my friend? The loss of his son was too much for King Leoric. I did what I could to ease his madness, but in the end, it overcame him. A black curse has hung over this kingdom from that day forward. But perhaps, if you were to free his spirit from his earthly prison, the curse would be lifted. Stand a fellow drinking peace? I don't care about that. Listen, no skeleton is gonna be my king. Leoric is king. King! So you hear me? Hail to the king! I sense a soul in search of answers. The dead who walk among the living follow the cursed king. He holds the power to raise yet more warriors for an ever-growing army of the undead. If you do not stop his reign, he will surely march across this land and slay all who still live here. May I serve you? I don't like to think about how the king died. I like to remember him for the kind and just ruler that he was. His death was so sad and seemed very wrong somehow. Over here. Look, I'm running a business here. I don't sell information, and I don't care about some king that's been dead longer than I've been alive. If you need something to use against this king of the undead, then I can help you out.
too much baggage. Whoa! What can I do for you? What ails you, my friend?
I can't carry any more. I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Well, what can I do for you? I sense a soul in search of answers. I sense a soul in search of answers.
of the dead are now avenged. some of this stuff. Too much baggage. I gotta pawn some of this stuff.
my friend. Stay a while and listen. Well, what can I do for you?
too much baggage. Too much baggage. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Well, what can I do for you? I sense a soul in search of answers. What ails you, my friend?
too much baggage. Too much baggage. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What ails you? Well, what can I do for you? Warmth of life has entered my tomb. Prepare yourself, mortal. 
to serve my master for eternity. <laughs> I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Oh, what can I do for you? I sense a soul in search of answers. The warmth of life has entered my tomb. Prepare yourself, mortal, to serve my master for eternity. <laughs>
I can't carry any more. Too much baggage. Please, no hurt, no kill. Keep alive, and next time good bring to you. Something for you I am making. Again, not kill Garbod. Live and give good. You take this as proof I keep word. Nothing yet. Almost done. Very powerful. Very strong. Live! Live! No pain. And promise I keep. Too much baggage. This too good for you. Very powerful. You want, you take. I'm not impressed. Too much baggage. My friend, stay a while and listen.
stay for a moment. I have a story you might find interesting. A caravan that was bound for the Eastern Kingdoms passed through here some time ago. It was supposedly carrying a piece of the heavens that had fallen to Earth. The caravan was ambushed by cloaked riders just north of here along the roadway. I searched the wreckage for this sky rock, but it was nowhere to be found. If you should find it, I believe that I can fashion something useful from it. Well, what can I do for you? So it came to be that there was a great revolution within the burning hells, known as the Dark Exile. The lesser evils overthrew the three prime evils and banished their spirit forms to the mortal realm. The demons Belial, the Lord of Lies, and Osmodan, the Lord of Sin, fought to claim rulership of hell during the absence of the three brothers. All of hell polarized between the factions of Belial and Osmodan, while the forces of the high heavens continually battered upon the very gates of hell.
I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Griswold speaks of the Heaven Stone that was destined for the Enclave located in the East. It was being taken there for further study. This stone glowed with an energy that somehow granted vision beyond that which a normal man could possess. I do not know what secrets it holds, my friend. But finding this stone would certainly prove most valuable. Oh, what can I do for you? I sense a soul in search of answers. The Heaven Stone is very powerful, and were it any but Griswold who bid you find it, I would prevent it. He will harness its powers, and its use will be for the good of us all. Can a fellow drink in peace? I used to have a nice ring. It was a really expensive one. Blue and green and red and silver. Don't remember what happened to it, though. I really miss that ring. What ails you, my friend? 
I don't know what it is they thought they could see with that rock, but I will say this. If rocks are falling from the sky, you would better be careful. Greetings, good master. Welcome to the Tavern of the Rising Sun. The caravan stopped here to take on some supplies for their journey to the east. I sold them quite an array of fresh fruits and some excellent sweetbreads that Garda had just finished baking. Shame what happened to them. Good day. How may I serve you? Well, a caravan of some very important people did stop here, but that was quite a while ago. They had strange accents and were starting on a long journey, as I recall. I don't see how you could hope to find anything that they would have been carrying. Over here! If anyone can make something out of that rock, Griswold can. He knows what he is doing. And as much as I try to steal his customers, I respect the quality of his work. Farnham, now there is a man with serious problems. And I know all about how serious problems can be. He trusted too much in the integrity of one man. And Lazarus led him into the very jaws of death. Oh, I know what it's like down there, so don't even start telling me about your plans to destroy the evil that dwells in that labyrinth. <laughs> Just watch your legs. I gotta pawn some of this.
I gotta pawn some of this stuff. I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Too much baggage. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen.
Oh, what can I do for you? Over here! What ails you, my friend? Too much baggage. I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Thank <laughs> you. 
my friend. Stay a while and listen. Oh, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? The warmth of life has entered my tomb. Prepare yourself, mortal, to serve my master for eternity. <laughs>
Rest well, Leoric. I'll find your son. Too much baggage. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. I do for you. Wow, what can I do for you?
Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? Whoa, what can I do for you? The smell of death surrounds me. This must be what Griswold wanted.
Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. I sense a soul in search of answers. Let me see that. Aye! Aye, it is as I believed! Give me a moment. Ah, here you are! I arranged pieces of the stone within a silver ring that my father left me. Ah, I hope it serves you well. Well, what can I do for you? Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. The curse of our king is past, but I fear that it was only part of a greater evil at work. However, we may yet be saved from the darkness that consumes our land, for your victory is a good omen. May light guide you on your way, good master. I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Too much baggage.
Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Whoa, what can I do for you?
I can't carry any more. I got a pawn somewhere. I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Oh, what can I do for you?
I sense a soul in search of answers. Though the heat of the sun is beyond measure, the mere flame of a candle is of greater danger. No energies, no matter how great, can be used without the proper focus. For many spells, ensorcelled staves may be charged with magical energies many times over. I have the ability to restore their power, but know that nothing is done without a price. Wow, what can I do for you?
some of this stuff. I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. do for you.
Over here. Beyond the Hall of Heroes lies the Chamber of Bone. Eternal death awaits any who would seek to steal the treasures secured within this room. So speaks the Lord of Terror, and so it is written.
I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Well, what can I do for you? What ails you, my friend? This sounds like a very dangerous place. If you venture there, please take great care. Good day. How may I serve you? I'm afraid that I haven't heard anything about that. Perhaps Kane, the storyteller, could be of some help. Farnham is a drunkard who fills his belly with ale and everyone else's ears with nonsense. I know that both Pepin and Ogden feel sympathy for him, but I get so frustrated watching him slip farther and farther into a befuddled stupor every night. Over here. Mm, a vast and mysterious treasure, you say? Mm, maybe I could be interested in picking up a few things from you. Or better yet, don't you need some rare and expensive supplies to get you through this ordeal? Not everyone in Tristram has a use, or a market, for everything you'll find in the labyrinth. Not even me, as hard as that is to believe. Sometimes only you will be able to find a purpose for some things. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. A book that speaks of a chamber of human bones? Well, a chamber of bone is mentioned in certain archaic writings that I studied in the libraries of the East. These tomes inferred that when the lords of the underworld desired to protect great treasures, they would create domains where those who died in the attempt to steal that treasure would be forever bound to defend it. A twisted, but strangely fitting, end.
Well, what can I do for you? Ah, no, nothing in this place. But you may try asking Cain. He talks about many things. And we're not surprised maybe he had some answers to your question. Can't a fellow drink in peace? Why don't that old crone do something for a change? Sir, sir, she's got stuff. If you listen to me, she's unnatural. I ain't never seen her eat or drink, and you can't trust somebody who doesn't drink at least a little. Okay, so listen. There's this chamber of wood, see, and his wife, you know, her, tells the tree, because she got away. Then I says that might work against him, but if you think I'm going to pay for this, you, uh, yeah. I sense a soul in search of answers. You will become an eternal servant of the Dark Lords should you perish within this cursed domain. Enter the Chamber of Bone at your own peril. Good, 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 good
I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Oh, what can I do for you? Whoa, what can I do for you? I sense a soul in search of answers. Over here. Thank <laughs> you. 
What ails you, my friend? Ogden's barmaid is a sweet girl. Her grandmother is quite ill and suffers from delusions. She claims that they are visions, but I have no proof of that one way or the other. Too much baggage. Too much baggage. baggage.
too much baggage. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Oh, what can I do for you? I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Too much baggage.
Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Well, what can I do for you? I don't have a spell ready. Over here.
too much.
too much baggage. I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Well, what can I do for you? Oh, what can I do for you?
Many demons traveled to the mortal realm in search of the three brothers. These demons were followed to the mortal plane by angels who hunted them throughout the vast cities of the east. The angels allied themselves with a secretive order of mortal magi named the Herodrim, who quickly became adept at hunting demons. They also made many dark enemies in the underworlds.
too much baggage. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. I sense a soul in search of answers. do for you. What can I do for you? Whoa, what can I do for you? do for you. What? Why are you here? All these interruptions are enough to make one insane. <laughs> here, take this and leave me to my work. Trouble me no more. Uh. 
Uh, your curiosity will be the death of you. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I break your concentration? I gotta pawn some of this stuff. I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Well, what can I do for you?
Well, what can I do for you? Too much baggage. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen.
Well, what can I do for you?
What ails you, my friend? What ails you, my friend?
It's hot down here. Too much baggage. baggage too much baggage I gotta pawn some of this stuff.
I can't use this yet. Rest in peace, my friend. Too much baggage. some of this stuff. My friend, stay a while and listen.
Well, what can I do for you? Over here. What ails you, my friend?
Whoa, what can I do for you? Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Whoa, what can I do for you? What ails you, my friend? I really don't understand why Ogden stays here in Tristram. He suffers from a slight nervous condition, but he is an intelligent and industrious man who would do very well wherever he went. I suppose it may be the fear of the many murders that happen in the surrounding countryside, or perhaps the wishes of his wife that keep him and his family where they are. Greetings, good master. Welcome to the Tavern of the Rising Sun. Word is a rapscallion and a little scoundrel. He was always getting into trouble, and it's no surprise what happened to him. He probably went fooling about someplace that he shouldn't have been. I feel sorry for the boy, but I don't abide the company that he keeps. What do we have here? Interesting. It looks like a book of reagents. Keep your eyes open for a black mushroom. It should be fairly large and easy to identify. If you find it, bring it to me, won't you? Now that's one big mushroom. Yes, this will be perfect for a brew that I am creating. By the way, the healer is looking for the brain of some demon or another so he can treat those who have been afflicted by their poisonous venom. I believe that he intends to make an elixir from it. If you help him find what he needs, 
Please see if you can get a sample of the elixir for me. Excellent! This is just what I had in mind. I was able to finish the elixir without this, but it can't hurt to have this to study. Would you please carry this to the witch? I believe that she is expecting it. What ails you, my friend? Griswold knows as much about the art of war as I do about the art of healing. He is a shrewd merchant, but his work is second to none. Oh, I suppose that may be because he's the only blacksmith left here. What? Now you bring me that elixir from the healer? Oh, I was able to finish my brew without it. Why don't you just keep it?
I sense a soul in search of answers. I can't cast that here. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Well, what can I do for you?
Whoa, what can I do for you? Whoa, what can I do for you? What ails you, my...
too much baggage. Too much baggage. Mm-hmm. 
Too much baggage.
Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Well, what can I do for you? What ails you, my friend? What ails While I use some limited forms of magic to create the potions and elixirs I store here, Adria is a true sorceress. She never seems to sleep, and she always has access to many mystic tomes and artifacts. I believe her hut may be much more than the hovel it appears to be, but I can never seem to get inside the place.
gotta pawn some of this stuff. Too much baggage. I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Too much baggage. I gotta pawn some of this stuff. I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Whoa, what can I do for you? Oh, 
I sense a soul in search of answers.
So it came to be that the three prime evils were banished in spirit form to the mortal realm, and after sowing chaos across the east for decades, they were hunted down by the cursed order of the mortal Haradrim. The Haradrim used artifacts called soul stones to contain the essence of Mephisto, the Lord of Hatred, and his brother Baal, the Lord of Destruction. The youngest brother, Diablo, the Lord of Terror, escaped to the west. Eventually, the Haradrim captured Diablo within a soul stone as well and buried him under an ancient forgotten cathedral. There, the Lord of Terror sleeps and awaits the time of his rebirth. Know ye that he will seek a body of youth and power to possess, one that is innocent and easily controlled. He will then arise to free his brothers and once more fan the flames of the Sin War. I must be getting close. baggage.
Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Oh, what can I do for you? I sense a soul in search of answers. What ails you, my friend? What ails you, my friend?
baggage. Too much baggage. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? Over here. What ails you, my friend?
What ails you, my friend?
can't carry any more. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What can I do for you? Whoa, what can I do for you? The armories of hell are home to the warlord of blood. In his wake lay the mutilated bodies of thousands. Angels and man alike have been cut down to fulfill his endless sacrifices to the dark ones who scream for one thing, blood.
carry any more. Too much baggage. I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Too much baggage. Not enough mana. my friend. Stay a while and listen. Whoa, what can I do?
Well, what can I do for you? Well, what can I do for you? Whoa, what can I do for you? Too much baggage. Too much baggage.
Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Oh, what can I do for you? you my friend oh. what ails you my friend What ails you, my friend?
baggage. much baggage. some of this stuff. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Whoa, what can I do for you? Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, what can I do for you? What ails you, my friend? What ails you, my friend? Over here!
I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Too much baggage. on some of this stuff. Hello, my friend. I do for you. you my friend
I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Hello, my friend. Well, what can I do for you? Oh, what can I do for you? What ails you, my friend?
Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Whoa, what can I do for you? Whoa, what can I do for you? What ails you, my friend? Whoa, what can I do for you? What ails you, my friend? I sense a soul in search of answers.
What ails you, my friend? Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Well, what can I do for you? I can't cast that here. Thank <laughs> you. 
Not enough mana. Not enough mana.
this does not bode well, for it confirms my darkest fears. While I did not allow myself to believe the ancient legends, I cannot deny them now. Perhaps the time has come to reveal who I am. My true name is Deckard Cain, the Elder, and I am the last descendant of an ancient brotherhood that was dedicated to safeguarding the secrets of a timeless evil, an evil that quite obviously has now been released. The Archbishop Lazarus, once King Leoric's most trusted advisor, led a party of simple townsfolk into the labyrinth to find the king's missing son, Albrecht. Quite some time passed before they returned, and only a few of them escaped with their lives. Curse me for a fool! I should have suspected his veiled treachery then. It must have been Lazarus himself who kidnapped Albrecht and has since hidden him within the labyrinth. I do not understand why the Archbishop turned to the darkness, or what his interest is in the child, unless he means to sacrifice him to his dark masters. That must be what he has planned. The survivors of his rescue party say that Lazarus was last seen running into the deepest bowels of the labyrinth. You must hurry and save the prince from the sacrificial blade of this demented fiend. Well, what can I do for you? Greetings, good master. Welcome to the Tavern of the Rising Sun. Lazarus was the archbishop who led many of the townspeople into the labyrinth. I lost many good friends that day, and Lazarus never returned. I suppose he was killed along with most of the others. If you would do me a favor, good master, please do not talk to Farnham about that day. Can't a fellow drink in peace? They stab! They bite! Then they're all around you! Liar! Liar! They're all dead! Dead! Do you hear me? They just keep falling and falling! The blood spilling out all over the floor! Oh, his fault! <laughs> What ails you, my friend? I was shocked when I heard of what the townspeople were planning to do that night. I thought that of all people, Lazarus would have had more sense than that. He was an archbishop and always seemed to care so much for the townsfolk of Tristram. So many were injured, I could not save them all. Well, what can I do for you? Ah, I was there when Lazarus led us into the labyrinth. He spoke of holy retribution. But when we started fighting those hellspawn, he did not so much as lift his mace against them. He just ran deeper into the dim, endless chambers that were filled with the servants of darkness. Good day. How may I remember Lazarus as being a very kind and giving man. He spoke at my mother's funeral and was supportive of my grandmother and myself in a very troubled time. I pray every night that somehow he is still alive and safe.
Over here. If I were a few years older, I would shower her with whatever riches I could muster. And let me assure you, I could get my hands on some very nice stuff. Jillian is a beautiful girl who should get out of Tristram as soon as it is safe. Hmm, maybe I'll take her with me when I go. Yes, the righteous Lazarus, who is so effective against those monsters down there. And didn't help save my leg, did it? Look, I'll give you a free piece of advice. Ask Farnham. He was there. I sense a soul in search of answers. I did not know this Lazarus of whom you speak, but I do sense a great conflict within his being. He poses a great danger and will stop at nothing to serve the powers of darkness which have claimed him as theirs. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello, my friend. Wow, what can I do for you? Wow, what can I do for you? What ails you, my friend? What ails you, my friend? Wow, what can I do for you? What ails you, my friend?
I can't cast that here. Abandon your foolish quest. All that awaits you is the wrath of my master. You are too late to save the child. Now you will join him in hell.
Madness ends here, betrayer.
Your story is quite grim, my friend. Lazarus will surely burn in hell for his horrific deed. The boy that you describe is not our prince. But I believe that Albrecht may yet be in danger. The symbol of power that you speak of must be a portal in the very heart of the labyrinth. Know this, my friend. The evil that you move against is the Dark Lord of Terror. He is known to mortal men as Diablo. It was he who was imprisoned within the labyrinth many centuries ago, and I fear that he seeks to once again sow chaos in the realm of mankind. You must venture through the portal and destroy Diablo before it is too late. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What can I do for you? The innkeeper has little business and no real way of turning a profit. He manages to make ends meet by providing food and lodging for those who occasionally drift through the village. But they're as likely to sneak off into the night as they are to pay him. If it weren't for the stores of grains and dried meats he kept in his cellar, why most of us would have starved during that first year when the entire countryside was overrun by demons. Over here. What ails you, my friend?
I gotta pawn some of this stuff. I gotta pawn some of this stuff.
I gotta pawn some of this stuff. carry any more. I gotta pawn some of this stuff.
gotta pawn some of this. Whoa! What can I do for you? Hello, my friend. Whoa! What can I do for you? What ails you, my friend? What ails you, my friend? I gotta pawn some of this stuff. I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Thank <laughs> you. 
The soul stone burns with hell fire as an eerie red glow blurs your vision. Fresh blood flows into your eyes and you begin to hear the tormented whispers of the damned. You have done what you knew must be done. The essence of Diablo is contained for now. You pray that you have become strong enough to contain the demon and keep him at bay. Although you have been fortified by your quest, you can still feel him clawing his way up from the dark recesses of your soul. Fighting to retain control, your thoughts turn toward the ancient mystic lands of the Far East. Perhaps there, beyond the desolate wastes of Aranach, you will find an answer. Or perhaps, salvation. Since the beginning, the forces of light and darkness have engaged in an eternal war. The great conflict, whose victor will rise from the apocalyptic ashes to hold sway over all creation. To this end, the angels of the high heavens adhere to strict militaristic disciplines. Seraphim warriors strike at the enemies of light with swords imbued with righteous wrath and justice. The angels believe that only absolute discipline can properly restore order to the myriad realms, while the demonic denizens of the burning hells hold that absolute chaos is the true nature of all things. The battles of the great conflict rage across both time and space, often infringing upon the very fabric of reality itself. From the crystal arch at the very heart of the high heavens to the arcane hellforge of the underworld, the warriors of these eternal realms journey to wherever their timeless conflict carries them. The legendary deeds of the heroes of the realms beyond elicit both veneration and insight. The greatest of these heroes was Iswal, lieutenant to the archangel Tyrael and bearer of the angelic rune blade Azurath. He once led a fierce attack upon the Hellforge as the creation of the dark demon blade Shadowfang was nearing completion. His quest was to destroy both wielder and weapon, a charge that he was destined never to complete. Iswal was overcome by the legions of chaos and tragically was lost to the darkness. His fate stands as testament to the fact that angels and demons alike shall fearlessly enter into any domain, so long as their hated enemies dwell within. Although the great conflict burned hotter and longer than any of the stars in the sky, neither side could gain dominion over the other for long. Both factions sought some way to turn the tides of the war to their favor. With the ascension of man and his mortal realm, the great conflict ground to a mysterious halt. Both armies paused in a breathless stalemate, waiting to see to whose side man would eventually turn. Mortals had the unique ability to choose between darkness and light, and it was held that this would be the deciding factor in the outcome of the great conflict. Thus, the agents of the nether realms descended to the mortal realm to vie for the favor of man. The coming of the great conflict to the mortal realm is known as the Sin War. Angels and demons, disguising themselves while traveling amongst men, attempted to secretly lure mortals to their respective causes. Over time, the forces of darkness discovered that mortals responded much more to brute force than to subtle coercion, and so began to terrorize man into submission. The angels fought to defend humanity against this demonic oppression, but all too often their austere methods and severe punishments succeeded only in alienating those whom they sought to protect. The violent battles of the Sin War occurred often, but they were seldom witnessed by the prying eyes of man. Only a few enlightened souls were aware of the supernatural beings that walked amongst the huddled masses of humanity. Powerful mortals arose and accepted the challenge of the Sin War, allying themselves with both sides in the great conflict. 
the legendary deeds of these great mortal warriors served to earn both the respect and hatred of the netherworlds. Although lesser demons kneeled before those possessing power and strength, they also cursed the very existence of mortal man. Many of these fiends believed that the deadlock brought about by the emergence of man was a perverse offense to their higher role in the great scheme of things. This jealousy of man led to harsh, atrocious acts of violence by the demons against the mortal realm. Some men learned of this deep hatred and used it against the denizens of the underworld. One such mortal, Horazan the Summoner, delighted in summoning demons and then breaking them to his will. Horazan, along with his brother Bartuk, were members of the Eastern Mage Clan, known as the Vizirai. This mystic clan studied the ways of demons and had catalogued their lore for generations. Empowered by this knowledge, Horazan was able to take the work of the Vizirai and pervert it for his demented purposes. The denizens of hell sought revenge against this bold mortal, but Horazan managed to keep himself well protected within his arcane sanctuary. Bartok, the brother of Horazan, was eventually lured to the side of darkness. He was granted exceptional strength and longevity, and fought alongside the legions of hell against the cursed Vizirai, and eventually his own brother during the Sin War. Although Bartuk was renowned amongst the warriors of many realms, his dominance in battle came with a terrible price. An insatiable lust for mortal blood pervaded his every thought and deed. Bartuk soon became as fond of bathing in the blood of his enemies as he did of shedding it, and in time he came to be known only as the Warlord of Blood. 7 is the number of the powers of hell, and 7 is the number of the great evils. Duriel, the Lord of Pain. Andariel, the Maiden of Anguish. Belial, the Lord of Lies. Asmodan, the Lord of Sin. These are the true names of the lesser of the great evils. For ages uncounted, each have ruled over their own domains within the burning hells, seeking absolute dominion over their infernal brethren. As the lesser four continuously vied for the control of those forces that dwelled within their realms, the greater three held absolute power over the whole of hell. The lesser four use dark and evil measures in their quest for power, and herein begins the legend of the Dark Exile. Mephisto, the Lord of Hatred. Baal, the Lord of Destruction. Diablo, the Lord of Terror. These are the prime evils of hell that wielded their power as a dark, sovereign triumvirate. The three brothers ruled over the lesser four by brutal force and malicious cunning. Being the eldest and strongest of the evils, the three brothers were responsible for countless victories against the armies of the light. Although they never held sway over the high heavens for long, the three were justly feared by enemies and subjects alike. With the ascension of man and the subsequent standstill of the great conflict, the three brothers began to devote their energies to the perversion of mortal souls. The three realized that man was the key to victory in the war against heaven, and thus altered their rigid agenda that they had propagated since the beginning. This change caused many of the lesser evils to question the authority of the three, and so brought about a great rift between the prime evils and their servitors. In their ignorance, the lesser evils began to believe that the three were afraid to continue the war with heaven. Frustrated by the cessation of the war, Asmodan and Belial saw the situation as their chance to overthrow the prime evils and take control of hell for themselves. The two demon lords made a pact with their minor brethren, assuring them that the wretched plague of humanity would not deter the ultimate victory of the sons of hell. Asmodan and Belial devised a plan to end the stalemate, achieve victory in the Sin War, and ultimately ride the bloody crest of the great conflict straight into the very arms of Armageddon. Thus, a great revolution was set into motion as all of hell went to war against the three brothers.
The brothers fought with all of the savagery of the underworld, and to their credit annihilated a third of Hell's treacherous legions. In the end, however, they were overcome by the horned death, led by the traitors Osmodon and Belial. The prime evils, weakened and bodiless, were banished to the mortal realm, where Osmodon hoped that they would remain trapped forever. Osmodon believed that with the three set loose upon humanity, the angels would be forced to turn their focus upon the mortal plane, thus leaving the gates of heaven abandoned and defenseless. Those few demons who still pledged allegiance to the three brothers fled the wrath of Osmodon and Belial, escaping to the realm of man to seek out their lost masters. As the war fires died out upon the battlefields of hell, Osmodon and Belial began to argue over which of them held the higher authority. The pact that they had made quickly fell to ashes as the two demon lords took up arms against each other. The legions of hell that remained were polarized behind either warlord, launching themselves into a bloody civil war that has lasted to this day. In the ancient days, before the rise of the Western empires, the dark and terrible entities known as the Three Evils were exiled to the world of man. These eternal entities wandered throughout the waking world and fed upon the lusts of men, leaving chaos and attrition in their wake. The evils turned father against son and prompted many great nations into brutal and petty wars. Their exile from hell left them with an insatiable hunger to bring suffering and pain to all those who would not kneel before them. And so the three brothers ravaged the lands of the Far East for countless centuries. Eventually, a secretive order of mortal magi was gathered together by the enigmatic archangel Tyrael. These sorcerers were to hunt the three evils and put an end to their vicious rampage. The order, known as the Herodrim, consisted of wizards from the diverse and numerous mage clans of the East. Employing disparate magical practices and disciplines, this unlikely brotherhood succeeded in capturing two of the brothers within powerful artifacts called soul stones. Mephisto and Baal, trapped within the swirling spiritual constraints of the soul stones, were then buried beneath the dunes of the desolate eastern sands. The powers of hatred and wanton destruction seemed to diminish in the east as a nervous peace began to settle over the land. Yet for many decades the Herodrim continued their grim search for the third brother, Diablo. They knew that if the Lord of Terror was left untamed, there could never be any lasting peace within the realm of humanity. The Herodrum followed in the wake of terror and anarchy that spread throughout the western lands. After a great battle which claimed the lives of many brave souls, the Lord of Terror was captured and imprisoned within the last of the soul stones by a group of Herodrum monks led by the initiate Jared Cain. These monks carried the cursed stone to the land of Kandras and buried it within a secluded cave near the river Talsand. Above this cave, the Herodrum constructed a great monastery from which they could continue to safeguard the soul stone. As ages passed, the Herodrum constructed a network of catacombs beneath the monastery to house the earthly remains of the martyrs of their order. Generations passed in Kandaras, and the numbers of the Herodrum slowly dwindled. With no quests left to undertake, and too few sons to sustain their guardianship, the once powerful order faded into obscurity. Eventually, the great monastery that they had built fell to ruins as well. Although villages grew and thrived around the shell of the old monastery, no one knew of the dark, secret passageways that stretched into the cold earth beneath it. None could have dreamed of the burning red gem that pulsed within the labyrinth's heart. Years after the last of the Herodrum had died, a great and prosperous society grew in the lands of the West. 
As time wore on, many eastern pilgrims settled in the lands surrounding Condoras, and soon established small, self-contained kingdoms. A few of these kingdoms bickered with Condoras over holdings of property or routes of trade. These squabbles did little to upset the lasting peace of the West, and the great northern kingdom of Westmarch proved to be a strong ally of Condoras, as the two lands steadily engaged in ventures of barter and commerce. During this time, a bold new religion of the light, known as Zakarum, began to spread throughout the kingdom of Westmarch and into many of its northern principalities. Zakarum, founded in the Far East, implored followers to enter into the light and forsake the darkness that lurked within their souls. The people of Westmarch adopted the statutes of Zakarum as their sacred mission in the world. Westmarch began to turn towards its neighbors, expecting them to embrace this new beginning as well. Tensions rose between the kingdoms of Westmarch and Condoras, as the priests of Zakarum began to preach their foreign dogma, whether they were welcomed or not. It was then that the great northern lord Laoric came unto the lands of Condoras, and in the name of Zakarum declared himself king. Laoric was a deeply religious man, and had brought many knights and priests with him that comprised his order of the light. Laoric and his trusted adviser, the Archbishop Lazarus, made their way to the city of Tristram. Laoric appropriated the ancient, decrepit monastery on the outskirts of town for his seat of power, and renovated it to match its time-lost glory. Although the free people of Condoras were not pleased with being placed under the sudden rule of a foreign king, Laoric served them with justice and might. Eventually, the people of Condoras grew to respect the kind Laoric, sensing that he sought only to guide and protect them against the oppression of darkness. Not long after Laoric took possession of Condoras, a power, long asleep, awakened within the dark recesses beneath the monastery. Sensing that freedom was within his grasp, Diablo entered the nightmares of the archbishop and lured him into the dark subterranean labyrinth. In his terror, Lazarus raced throughout the abandoned hallways until he at last came to the chamber of the burning soul stone. No longer in command of his body or spirit, he raised the stone above his head and uttered words long forgotten in the realm of mortals. His will destroyed, Lazarus shattered the soul stone upon the ground. Diablo once again came into the world of man. Although he was released from his imprisonment within the soul stone, the Lord of Terror was still greatly weakened from his long sleep and required an anchor to the world. Once he had found a mortal form to wear, he could begin to reclaim his vastly depleted power. The great demon weighed the souls residing in the town above, and chose to take the strongest of them, that of King Laoric. For many months King Laoric secretly fought the evil presence that twisted his thoughts and emotions. Sensing that he had been possessed by some unknown evil, Laoric hid his dark secret from his priests, hoping that somehow his own devout righteousness would be enough to exorcise the corruption growing inside him. He was sorely mistaken. Diablo stripped away the core of Laoric's being, burning away all honor and virtue from his soul. Lazarus, too, had fallen under the sway of the demon, keeping close to Laoric at all times. Lazarus worked to conceal the plans of his new master from the Order of Light, hoping that the demon's power would grow, well concealed amongst the servants of Zakarum. The priests of Zakarum and the citizenry of Condoras recognized the disturbing change within their liege. His once proud and rugged form became distorted and deformed. King Leoric became increasingly deranged and ordered immediate executions of any who dared to question his methods or authority. Leoric began to send his knights to other villages to bully their townspeople into submission. The people of Condoras, who had once grown to see great honor in their ruler, began to call Leoric the Black King. 
Driven to the brink of madness by the Lord of Terror, King Leoric slowly alienated his closest friends and advisers. Lakdanan, captain of the Knights of the Order of Light, an honored champion of Zakarum, tried to discern the nature of his king's deteriorating spirit. Yet at every turn, the Archbishop Lazarus would waylay Lakdanan and admonish him for questioning the actions of the king. As tensions grew between the two, Lazarus charged Lakdanan with treason against the kingdom. To the priests and knights of Leoric's court, the prospect of Lakdanan committing treason was ridiculous. Lakdanan's motives were honorable and just, and soon many began to question the reason of their once beloved king. Leoric's madness was growing more obvious with each passing day. Sensing that the advisers of the court were becoming increasingly suspicious of foul treachery, Lazarus desperately sought to contain the eroding situation. The archbishop masterfully convinced the delusional Leoric that the kingdom of Westmarch was plotting against him, secretly planning to dethrone him and annex Kandaras into its own lands. Leoric flew into a rage and summoned his advisers to his side. Manipulated by the archbishop, the paranoid king declared a state of war between the kingdoms of Kandaras and Westmarch. Leoric ignored the warnings and admonishments of his advisers, and the royal army of Kandaras was ordered to the north to engage in a war that they did not believe in. Lakdanan was appointed by Lazarus to lead the armies of Kandaras into Westmarch. Although Lakdanan argued against the necessity of the coming conflict, he was honor-bound to uphold the will of his king. Many of the high priests and officials were forced to travel to the north as emissaries on errands of diplomatic urgency as well. The desperate ploy of Lazarus had succeeded in sending many of the king's more troublesome advisers to their certain deaths. The absence of prying advisers and inquisitive priests left Diablo free to assume total control over the king's battered soul. As the Lord of Terror attempted to strengthen his hold upon the maddened king, he found that the lingering spirit of Leoric fought with him still. Although the control over Leoric that Diablo held was formidable, the demon knew that in his weakened state he could never take complete possession of his soul as long as a glimmer of his will remained. The demon lord sought a fresh and innocent host upon which to build his terror. The demon relinquished his control over Leoric, but the king's soul was left corrupted and his mind crazed. Diablo began to search throughout Kandurus for the perfect vessel to act as his focus, and found such a soul easily within his reach. Enjoined by his dark master, Lazarus kidnapped Albrecht, the only son of Leoric, and dragged the terrified youth down into the blackness of the labyrinth. Flooding the boy's defenseless mind with the essence of pure terror, Diablo easily took possession of the young Albrecht. Pain and fire raced through the child's soul. Hideous laughter filled his head and clouded his thoughts. Paralyzed with fear, Albrecht felt the presence of Diablo within his mind as it seemed to push him down, deeper and deeper into darkness and oblivion. Diablo gazed upon his surroundings through the eyes of the young prince. A lustful hunger still tortured the demon after his frustrating bout for control over Leoric, but the nightmares of the boy provided ample substance to sate him. Reaching deep into Albrecht's subconscious, Diablo ripped the greatest fears of the child from their hiding places and gave them breath. Albrecht watched, as if out of a dream, twisted and disfigured forms appeared all around him. Unholy writhing visages of terror danced about him chanting choruses of obscenities. All of the monsters that he had ever imagined or believed that he had seen in his life became flesh and were given life before him. Large bodies, comprised of living rock, erupted from the walls and bowed to their dark master. The ancient skeletal corpses of the Herodrum arose from archaic crypts and lumbered off into the red-washed corridors beyond. As the cacophony of madness and nightmares hammered its final blow against Albrecht's shattered spirit, the blood-lusted ghouls and demons of his mind scattered and scrambled maniacally into the lengthening passageways of his waking nightmare. 
The ancient catacombs of the Herodrum had become a twisted labyrinth of raw, focused terror. Empowered by Diablo's possession of young Albrecht, the creatures of the boy's own imagination had gained corporeal form. So strong was the terror that grew inside of Albrecht that the borders of the mortal realm began to warp and tear. The burning hell began to seep into the world of man and take root within the labyrinth. Beings and occurrences, displaced by time and space, and long lost to the history of man, were pulled screaming into the ever-expanding domain. The body of Albrecht, fully possessed by Diablo, began to distort and change. The small boy grew, and his eyes blazed as tendril-like spines ripped through his flesh. Great arched horns erupted from Albrecht's skull, as Diablo altered the form of the child to match that of his demonic body. Deep within the recesses of the labyrinth, a growing power was being harnessed. When the moment was right, Diablo would venture once more into the mortal world and free his captive brothers Mephisto and Baal. The prime evils would be reunited, and together they would reclaim their rightful place in hell. The war against the zealous armies of Westmarch ended with a horrible slaughter with the army of Condoras ripped to shreds by the superior numbers and defensive positions of Westmarch, Lakdanan quickly gathered together those who were not captured or killed and ordered a retreat back to the safety of Condoras. They returned to find the town of Tristram in shambles. King Leoric, deep within the throes of madness, went into a rage when he learned that his son was missing. After scouring the village with the few guards that remained with him at the monastery, Leoric had decided that the townsfolk had abducted his son and hidden him somewhere. Although the townsfolk denied any knowledge of Prince Albrecht's whereabouts, Leoric insisted that they had crafted a conspiracy against him and that they would pay the price for such treachery. The mysterious disappearance of the Archbishop Lazarus left no one in Tristram with whom the king would take counsel. Overcome by grief and dementia, Leoric had many of the townsfolk executed for the crime of high treason. As Lokdanan and his fellow survivors returned to confront their king, Leoric sent his few remaining guards against them. Believing that Lokdanan was somehow part of the townsfolk's conspiracy, Leoric decreed that he and his party were to die. Lakdanan, finally realizing that Leoric was beyond salvation, ordered his men to defend themselves. The ensuing battle carried them down into the very halls of the darkened monastery, bringing a final desecration to the once holy sanctum of the Haradrum. Lakdanan won a bittersweet victory as his men were forced to kill all of Leoric's deceived protectors. They cornered the ravenous king within his own sanctuary and begged him to explain the atrocities he had committed. Leoric only spat at them and cursed them for traitors against both his crown and the light. Lakdanan walked slowly towards his king and sorrowfully drew his sword. Full of grief and rage, all honor having been cast to the winds, Lakdanan ran his blade through Leoric's shriveled, blackened heart. The once noble king screamed an unearthly death cry, and as his madness finally overtook him, he brought down a curse upon those who had so betrayed him. Calling upon the forces of darkness that he had spent his entire life combating, Leoric condemned Lakdanan and the others to eternal damnation. In that last fleeting moment within the heart of the monastery, all that was ever virtuous or honorable about the stewards of Condorus was shattered forever. The Black King lay dead, slain at the hands of his own priests and knights. The young Prince Albrecht was still missing, and the proud defenders of Condoras were no more. The people of Tristram looked about their lifeless town and were greatly dismayed. Awash in feelings of both relief and remorse, they soon realized that their troubles had merely begun. Strange, eerie lights appeared in the darkened windows of the monastery. Misshapen, leathery-skinned creatures were seen venturing forth from the shadows of the church.
Horrible, wounded cries seemed to linger on the wind, emanating from deep underground. It became apparent that something quite unnatural had infested the once holy site. Travelers on the road surrounding Tristram were accosted by cloaked riders that seemed to now constantly roam the deserted countryside. Many villages fled Tristram, making their way to other towns or kingdoms, fearing some unnamed evil that seemed to wait in the shadows all around them. Those few who chose to remain seldom ventured out at night, and never tread foot upon the grounds of the cursed monastery. Whispered rumors of poor, innocent people being abducted in the night by wicked, nightmarish creatures filled the halls of the local inn. With no king, no law, and no army left to defend them, many of the townsfolk began to fear an attack from the things that now dwelt beneath their town. The Archbishop Lazarus, frayed and disheveled, returned from his absence and assured the townsfolk that he too had been ravaged by the growing evil of the monastery. With their desperate need for reassurance clouding their good judgment, Lazarus whipped the townspeople into a frenzied mob. Reminding them that Prince Albrecht was still unaccounted for, he persuaded many of the men to follow him into the depths of the monastery to search for the boy. They gathered torches, and soon the night air glowed with the flickering light of hope. They armed themselves with shovels, picks, and scythes, and so prepared, they boldly followed the treacherous archbishop straight into the fiery maw of hell itself. The few who survived the horrible fate that awaited them returned to Tristram and recounted what they could of the ordeal. Their wounds were terrible, and even the skills of the healer could not save some of them. As the stories of demons and devils spread, a stifling primal terror began to consume the hearts of all of the town's inhabitants. It was a terror that none of them had ever known. Deep beneath the foundations of the ruined monastery, Diablo gorged himself upon the fears of the mortals above him. He slowly sank back into the welcoming shadows and began to harness his depleted power. He smiled to himself in the sheltering darkness, for he knew that the time of his final victory was fast approaching. It was long ago that the enigmatic Archangel Tyrael bestowed upon us the secrets of the mysterious soul stones. Tyrael bequested upon our order three of these stones so we could contain the vile essences of the three prime evils who had been let loose upon our world. Although the artifacts were constructed in realms far removed from our own, we found that they were simple to understand. The soul stones affect only beings that are non-corporeal and thus have no power over living, breathing creatures. When invoked, the soul stones bring into being a strong spiritual vacuum. Any non-physical entities caught within this vacuum are drawn into the burning recesses of the soul stone and are forever trapped within. These spirits are released only when the soul stone is deactivated or destroyed. The power of the soul stones proved to be much more difficult to employ when used against the great prime evils. Voraciously disposed to possessing hapless mortals, the three brothers found that they were immune to the effects of the stones while occupying human souls. Sadly, we were forced to hunt down and kill the innocent victims of the prime evils so that their demonic essences could be subject to the effects of the soul stones. Mephisto and Diablo, once found, were easily lured into the soul stones. The capture of their brother Baal, however, became complicated when the soul stone that was to be his eternal prison was shattered and fragmented. We found that while the shards still held the power to lure the demon to them, they could not properly contain it. Tal Rasha, a fellow initiate who has since been immortalized in Haradrim lore, theorized that a mortal of strong will might be able to contain Baal within his own mortal soul. 
This sacrifice meant that the essence of any mortal so chosen would be forever tortured while locked in eternal conflict with the enthralled demon. To this end, Tal Rasha volunteered to contain the raging Lord of Destruction. Piercing his breast with a shard of the soul stone, Tal Rasha took within himself the essence of Baal, the Lord of Destruction. The initiate's body was shackled, chained, and buried deep within a tomb under the desert. The sacrifice of Tal Rasha has kept Baal imprisoned for many years now and although the demon was imprisoned without the use of a whole soul stone, we believe that our victory may be a hollow one. Should Tal Rasha ever escape, he would have the formidable powers of Baal added to his own. By ridding the world of this present evil, we may have created a nightmare worse than that which we first sought to contain.